But that's not what this life is. It's not all parties. Do a lot of guys get caught up in the party lifestyle? Yes. But you're not seeing the negative effect of that. You're not seeing these guys going home and not getting no more jobs because they were late to practice. What are you thinking? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. If you want to know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. What are you thinking? Hey. What are you thinking? Hey. If you want to know my thoughts, open your ears when I talk. Yeah. Hey. Welcome guys back to another episode of the Arnold Stars Podcast. I am your host, Arnold Lewis. I help athletes prepare mentally for a life of overseas basketball. If this is your first time to the show, please do me a huge favor and hit the like and subscribe button and stay tuned about all things overseas basketball. And in this episode today, we're going to be talking about the 10 misconceptions about being an overseas pro. There are so many misconceptions to the game that most athletes who haven't reached this level yet think that they know about the game. And all actually, you don't know nothing. Are you interested in playing overseas basketball one day? I wish someone would have told me one year after college, I would receive my first pro gig. I wish someone would have told me that having an agent does not guarantee that you will get hired. I wish someone would have told me being cut from a team because after 10 years in this game, everyone gets cut from a team. Now, after traveling from over 17 different countries and winning up to seven championships in my pro career, I've put together the six most important traits any player needs before starting their career. So go ahead and grab that ebook and get all the information you need today to start your career. Now you can't say no one didn't let you know. So go ahead, grab that ebook and get started so you can become the pro one day. Let's go. These are some of the misconceptions that we will be getting into today. I'm not even going to waste no time. I'm going to get straight into the meat juiciness of the conversation. First misconception, you're going to dominate the other players. I don't know why athletes believe or most players, I mean even say most of us black players who get who get hired and signed to go to these teams we automatically think it's a cakewalk. We think that we're just hooping against some scrubs. We're just hooping against some other players that ain't, they're not as good as us. They're, uh, I went to the States. I went to a university. I went to this school. I'm better than this player. I They're not, they're not going to be able to do nothing with me. They can't stop me. I'm just going to dominate the league and just run through and just get buckets. It's not like that. These guys put in just as much work, if not more. You'll see in some countries, some of these guys are just so, they're not physically or just gifted with the movements and the athleticism, but they have a, sometimes they have a, a harder work ethic than some of these guys because they're fighting for something a lot more. It means a lot more to come over and play against a American player or a really good player supposedly because they're already looking like I'm not as good compared to this player that they're bringing in. He must be really special. So I need to step my game up to a whole nother level to just compete. And most of these guys, they just play hard. It don't really be a spirit of entitlement with a lot of these guys. So they come out and they really bust their butt and not thinking that I'm better than the next person, but thinking I have to compete with all I have give these guys an advantage a lot of times. And a lot of times that's what leaves most players caught in the jam because they thinking that I'm going to just come over here and dominate. I'm going to just come over here and kill and I'm going to destroy everybody that steps in front of me and y'all not as good as me and I'm better than this. And you over there averaging nine points. Don't think that you're just going to come there and just dominate every single player that steps in front of you as if you're, it's just not the way the game goes. You got to put in your work and be as effective as you possibly can. That what that means with your work ethic and things that you do. Constantly fine tuning your game to get better and increase and get just become a better player. Don't think that you're gonna put just show up. Don't think you're just gonna show up and show out on every single person and it's all good. 
doesn't happen like that. Put your work in. Keep sharpening your tools to get better. Your money will increase every single year. I don't know why, especially for the like rookies, they believe that every single time I step onto the court and I play one season, I should I should be I should increase the money. I should get a, a raise. Doesn't always happen like that, bro. 90% of the times it don't happen like that. I did a video on this a couple of weeks ago on Keys to the Game. I think it was 10-year plan. And just talking about just the average salaries of rookies and average salary that most players are getting. So you have to understand that you're not just going to increase in money every single time. Like, oh, I played one season and I played good. My money should be through the roof now. I should be getting $10,000 a month. No, it does not work like that. You're not just going to go and be making about $1,500, $1,200 a month and then skyrocket to up to $15,000 a month. It just don't work like that. Stop looking at the quick flip. The quick, this game ain't just a quick flip. Yes, you can put your time in and something miraculous and you can get seen by the right person in your, your career take off. Does those situations happen? Of course they do. But stop looking at the anomaly and start looking at how can I build a career out of this and maximize and get the most out of it because a lot of times most players just looking at how much money I'm finna get the next season how can I it's a marathon not a sprint to the money it's a marathon a marathon on how to earn the money instead of a, a sprint to how, to how much I can get the next season or the next go round what is the long term build of your money that you're trying to get to that's going to allow you to get there instead of just thinking I'm finna get paid next season or next go round. I'm just automatically finna get paid. That is a bad thought process that I don't know who's. I must admit, I was. Just, I thought that as well. You know, I. You just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. It's not like that. You're not. Every season is not just like. Oh, it's the bad season now, and I'm finna get stupid lit. It's not always like that. It takes time some to build out of. A structural career and build it out to be more profitable in the long term. We got to start thinking more delayed gratification and what's the building process of, what's the traje- trajectory of the years in the. Like I said, go check out that episode. Um, I think it's ten year plan. Um, keys to the game. I don't know what exactly what number it is, but that kind of goes into that and breaks it down a little bit more. Number three, you will. Be the go-to guy on every team. You're not always going to be the go-to guy. This is a struggle for most players that think that, okay, I come into this game and I'm going to be one of two players or one of three players. So you automatically believe that everything should be ran through you and all the system is for you. That is not always the case. A lot of the times you might be signed to a team to just be the fourth option and i don't think most players have ever even heard that kind of talk about you get you signing me to be the fourth option because no agent and no put and no team are going to just tell you hey we're bringing you here to be the fourth option sometimes being the fourth option and just coasting your way to a championship on a really good team can be exactly what you need to propel your career into the next level but a lot of times we never even get think that I'm going to be a third, fourth option on any team. I didn't come here to be no third or fourth option. I came here to be the guy. I must have been here to be the go-to guy because you talk to the coach maybe and the GM or your agent was boosting you up saying, yeah, you can go in here and get your numbers or whatever the case may be. Get that thought process out of your head. Do not let that blind you and fool you to think that every time that you're going to be the guy. This is more about how, trying to be the guy and more about how do I solidify myself and what can I use this season or this situation to help me for my next gig or further on. Don't just think that because I'm not the guy that I I can't be here. I need to leave and I need to go find and get some or go to another team that appreciate. Role, role players get paid too. And not every season you're going to be a role player. Not every team and situation. Sometimes you're going to be the go-to guy and you need to put up 25 shots. Sometimes you need to be the role player and get five shots, six shots a game. Sometimes that is like that. But the thought process of thinking that every team that you go to, you're going to be the guy, that is not true. That is not factual. That is not how it is. 
That is not how the game works. You're not always going to be the go-to guy every single team you go to. So do not allow yourself to get blinded by that thought process. Get that out of your head first and foremost. Number four, you the club or organization that you are with will take care of you. And what I mean by take care of you, I mean they will make sure every single situation that you have going along with your life or life off the court, they're going to take care of it. That's not always the case. My first year in Columbia, I had, man, you got sick. You didn't have certain, like, just amenities. Not every club or organization. Sometimes they just pick you up, drop you off, and then they're gone. They, sometimes they don't make sure you got food. Sometimes they make sure they don't make sure that your water is on, your internet. You're gonna have to know how to take care of yourself and move around and use a translation and know how to get around by having conversations with people, having a mentor, having someone who can navigate you with just a few things that can help you with the generality. Hey, when you get to the airport, look to see if they got the little SIM card that you can use so you can have service just in case you get to the hotel and they don't have any Wi-Fi. At least you're set for like a week instead of just waiting around and not being able to communicate with nobody. Now you're stuck. Nobody's showing up. You don't know what's going on. You ain't got no Wi-Fi, but the team's supposed to be taking care of me. These situations have happened before, you know, and so you have to really understand that they're not always going to take care of every little single need for you, every little need, every little thing. There's so much little things that can go in. Hey, man, where's my water? Where's my food? Where's this? You know, I have to have a doctor's appointment. Nobody came pick me up. Where is it at? It's in another language. But some things you're going to have to figure out on yourself and don't rely be solely reliable upon the team to always take care of your every little need. That doesn't always happen. You get, you will be blessed to find a team that actually looks after the majority of the things that you need to get done with a timely manner, especially. I would say that constructs a good team, a team that can take care of the things that you need done in a timely manner. If they can get it done quick or get it done, that is a the signs of a very good organization, how quickly they can handle the small matters for you. Because something as such as, hey, the gas ran out and we ain't got no hot water, that might last for a week. A really good cup that might last in the next hour, a good, you know, or hey, they'll come and take care of it immediately. <laughs> not every club is like that. They're not always gonna be taking care of your little needs and you cold and you ain't got no and you ain't got no heater. Some countries it'd be so cold 10, 20 degrees, and you ain't got no heater. Or other ones, it'd be 110. And I'm like, can I get a fan? You, can, <laughs> you can't even get a fan. Like, there are some things, do not believe that every cup, that every organization and team that you go to, that they will automatically have your best interest and will be taking care of every little single need for you. It don't work like that. Don't think that. Be prepared to have your own little your own money set aside, be prepared to have your own situations that you can take care of on your own, like food, like, I don't know, transportation, mainly your phone. Make sure you have service on your phone so you can use to translate and just stay in touch. A lot of times players get caught up because they just can't get a hold of somebody over the minor situation of I don't even know how to communicate because they ain't got no wi-fi i use the wi-fi one because that's probably the biggest one because you can't communicate to get anything done and if you think every situation you go to your wi-fi is going to be on point boy i learned to love and appreciate america's wi-fi because it is not great in other countries like that it is not great boy i thought i i would go you would think oh maybe i go to the other country and ain't gonna be so what's the word so much people on the servers or whatever that i could be able to have good man no wi-fi service be so slow man it'd be so slow i remember i used to play the game man it just to be so slow and choppy and glitching and all that and then you might be staying with like two three players and then those everybody using the slow wi-fi together so it's even more slower than it <clears throat> can be all types of situations can happen so don't don't just think that every team is going to just have your best interests in mind. 
They, they're not. Misconception number five, you will get majority of the shots for your team. You will be the primary scorer. Understand that not every team is bringing you in to be a scorer. Not every team needs a Devin Booker or a flat-out scorer. Now, majority of times, are you brought in to score and be a big part of the team to change the game and contribute with your scoring? Majority of times, yes. But not always that you're going to become the, be the primary scorer or I'm going to come out here and drop 20. I don't know why players feel like they're going to come out here and average 20 and just ball out and I'm going to just come out here and put up 25 a night every single night because I see my homeboy out here. He was going crazy and I'm just as good as him. So I know I can go crazy. Stop thinking like that. That is a big misconception to think that you're going to come out here and take all the shots. I'll give you a perfect example. It, when I was in Chile for one of the seasons, majority of the season, on any given night, I'm taking 20 shots. That's a high amount. 17, 20 shots, um, that's, that's, a, that's an average night. Go to Argentina, average night. I think I averaged probably eight shots a game. Same player. Different different situation. Not you're not always going to be the main scorer or the main. I wouldn't even say the main scorer. It isn't that you probably can't outscore and be the best scorer on your team. They're not looking for you to be that main scorer and the main scoring option. That's not the way the offense is set up for you to be the main scoring option. Sometimes you're the off option where you just get. D- off plays and the ball just comes to you off the late, the last kick. Those are the type of rotations. Those are the type of systems that sometimes you find yourself into. So don't think that, oh, I'm just going to come here. I'm brought here to take 20 shots a game. I'm I'm brought here to be a scorer because I'm a scorer. Yeah, that's what I'm here for. Everybody not looking for just no, every team not looking for just uh, AI scorer to come in here and we're going to give you the ball and you take us to the promised land and you score and you you put up 30 shots a night and try to go for 30 every single Mm-mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't think like that. That's the quickest way to get yourself going. Because the first thing they say, hey, well, he don't pass the ball. He he only want to shoot. They already a lot of teams already have a bias against Americans, especially when it comes to playing, because they already feel like okay, they only can score and they can't do nothing else. So they try to make sure that they be more on the defensive. They like they just it's just a bad rep that they we have. That, oh, even though you are a good scorer, you only want to score. And you don't want to play with the team. And a lot of times it's about perceptions. So they looking at, man, if only he just wants to score and he doesn't want to play team basketball. Because like they always say about the difference between NBA and EuroLeague and most of Europe teams is the ability for them to play as a team. And they have good ball movement. They swing in the rock always. You always see the Euro. The European time or overseas basketball life is more about team basketball. You really, you rarely see it as portrayed as oh, this one dominant player that's taking over. Even though, even though they are that capability of a player, majority of times it's a pass first, systematic type basketball, almost like a college. Well, college is kind of changing a lot now. Most guys in college, they this, I guess, because it's geared more to more towards. The scoring aspect, so they're picking up the scoring a lot. So times are changing, but a traditional score um, basketball system is like an overseas system, a college system where they're swinging the rock a lot, a lot of movement with some NBA type game plan, which includes a lot of pick and roll, a lot of pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll system, swing, 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 extra pass, drive, drop it down. Seal. It, it's a. It's really college like. Majority of the higher that you go up, it's more system. It's more college like, and so you have to be able to adapt your game to be able to play within a system to stay in the system to get your money, and play. You got to be able to play in two, many different situations. You can't just say that I'm only. I'm just great at just. Oh, I'm just great at scoring the ball, and I'm a scorer. You're going to be going home and you're not going to be getting no other job. So it's very important to 
really focus on all the parts of your game. Maybe one season you might just be the, the best defender on your team and you're just bringing that to lock people up. Why would you as a player conceal yourself and lock yourself up by just minimizing yourself but only being one type of player? No, you are a player. A full player that has to do with the entirety of the game and not just label it, oh, I'm just a shooter. No, you are a player. You are a basketball player. You are a professional player. Not just limited to one thing. You have to be all rounded to the game to be, you know, just to get to be a better player. To everyone wants an all rounded game, an all rounded player. He can play defense. He can run. He's a good teamer. He he can he communicates with the other players. Like it's a lot that goes into it. Oh, not just he's just a scorer. How many scores are there in this game, in this world? It doesn't matter. There's so many scores. You don't want to just be labeled as a scorer. You want to be labeled as a great player. Great players get paid. Scores score. So you would want to focus more of your time on how do you develop yourself to be a great player other than I'm trying to be a great scorer because everyone's trying to score. You're going to need some of these people who are going to defend these scores. <laughs> you know, if you could show that to be the private person that can come in and lock a person up and they can, they're can considered as the best score, that'll get you that'll get you paid. But no one is focusing on defense no more. No one focus on the defense aspect. Come into the season saying that I'm going to be a defensive player of the year. Change up your mindset. Look at the game a different way. Look at it. How is everybody else going about it? And how can I clear my my own lane and clear my own path into this game by being one of the best defenders these teams or organizations has ever seen. Just be an absolute lockdown dog and just see how your bag increase. You got to come out the game with all different aspects. It can't be just, oh, I'm just a scorer. I'm just, hey, man, I'm just so, man. Anyways, moving on. Number six, overseas players live a life of constant luxury and extravagant parties without having to worry about responsibilities or disciplines. Let me tell you something right now. If you think you're going to come over here and party it up all night and live it up all day and don't have to worry about anything and it's just a party, it's just party town and we're out and we're dealing with all the little foreign baddies and we... You know, we in the bars and we just li- That's not what this is. <laughs> that is not what this is, bro. Is that a lot of what can happen or can pursue when you're overseas and you're playing? Yes. Do they go out? Do you have a good time and stuff? Yes. But that's not what this life is. It's not all parties. Do a lot of guys get caught up in the party lifestyle? Yes. But you're not seeing the negative effect of that. You're not seeing these guys going home and not getting no more jobs because they were late to practice. And they come to practice drunk. And they come to practice smelling like the bud. And you're tired because everybody knew you was out partying last night. Or you was out partying... And everybody in the town knows you because you're the basketball player of the town. And now they're outside. That you're out here talking. They're out here talking about you. And it's going to get back to the team. It's going to get back to the organization. And you're going to be just wondering why they're letting you go. I, I've heard of a couple of times this happened to players who are like, oh, he, he, he party too much. You can't just be out here partying and thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm just out here living life and we're going to go hit the party up on Saturday, Friday night, and then we're back on practice on Sunday. And we, they look at it a different way. Like, yes, you can go out. But there's some players that go out so much and they're just always portraying that and you always see they snap. It's so funny to me when I be on Instagram and I'm just seeing everybody posting their posts like, oh, we out and we in the club. But then I really know what's going on because maybe I know a homeboy or I know somebody who was just like, yeah, I was just with him. And he's dealing with this, this, that, and the third. Like, he got this situation going on. And he got this situation going on. But the longer you be in the game, the smaller it gets. And you know a player that knows a player that knows a player. And they know exactly the situation that's going on. 
so crazy the deeper you get in the game you start figuring out you're going to know somebody that knows exactly what's going on because they're talking the basketball world is small so this lifestyle of just outside partying all night and you think that's all you... i remember one time we were outside and we was in the we was partying and, the guy, and one of the players he was a new player to the league he just got there and we was on a break so you know we had a break a couple weeks so that's when they go out and have a good time as anybody, as you know, as players do, people do whatever. And I just remember him was like, "Oh yeah, you know, he was in there popping bottles, and he was just like, yeah, we gonna get this money, and we're gonna be out here, and we're gonna run it up, and bless." It. Two weeks later, he was gone. Cut. Out of there. You think you're ready to just be out there in that life? If you're not solidified in what you're doing, and you're not focused on what you're supposed to be doing. Thinking that you're just out here and living the life and living an extravagant life. You got to stay on your P's and Q's on this game. You got to stay focused. You came over here to to win. Not to take it easy the minute you get to your situation. That's even more of a time to lock in and really focus on what you need to focus on. Because you're there for a reason. You're there to win games. To build up your career, build up your resume, and not this overseas extravagant lifestyle of always partying. It's a lifestyle, and I'm in a movie. It's going to be a movie, all right? A short one. <laughs> you will have a short one. So understand that that's not what this life is all about. Misconception number seven. Overseas players do not face language barriers or cultural challenges as they can easily adapt to any environment due to their athletic status. Don't believe that. Just because you're tall and you can jump and you can run and you got... Listen, most of these people in other countries, they don't care. Like in South America, majority. You might be in a town and you can get... A, like they, You might get recognized for being a basketball player, but nobody cares that you... like. It doesn't matter. You don't... If you can't speak the language, if you can't communicate, just because you can run and jump, that ain't going to help you with nothing. You not being able to communicate with the people around you, I think people don't understand that until they get in that situation. You not being able to, let's say, order some food. You not being able to just communicate with your teammate next to you. And I think that... That's why most players don't even pretty much think about it. They think just because I might be good and I got a job, that's it. Not being able to talk to your point guard and explain to him that, hey, bro, I'm open in this corner, that is that is hard as a player that you most players don't realize. And that's what's difficult, especially in the learning curve in the beginning of most players' careers. They just can't communicate. It's hard to communicate with people who don't speak your language. Yeah, we're speaking basketball, and we have the same understanding that we want to get the job done and win, but it's difficult if they don't speak one lick of English and you don't speak one lick of their language. I don't care how tall you is or whatever, that ain't going to help you win games. Communication is what's going to help you win games. And if you can't communicate, I don't care how good you are, you're only going to get as far as your team in the first place. So thinking that you're just going to be able to, that it's just a cakewalk as soon as you get in there. Language barrier, once again, check out my book, if you guys haven't um, checked that, if you guys checked out the show notes, I have a link to my book and it talks all about networking and communication and language barrier and how do you, the steps that you need in order to break down the language barrier and steps that you can take to help because these arise more often than not that you can't communicate with the people that you need to communicate and that can lead to a shorter career. So that's something that you must have. How do you better understand the player that you are communicating with when it comes down to your teammates or the people in the organization or just in a city that you're around? And I just kind of break down in there a little bit more step by step on how you need to certain tips and tricks, not even tips and tricks, just how do you go about the situation? How do you mentally handle that situation? Because if you can't mentally handle not being able to communicate and do not look for other ways to bring up connecting ways, like I believe one of the instances in the book, I I said that, you know, take them out. 
Maybe the player that you want to deal with, like your point guard, for example, your point guard, you and him don't speak the same language. And you can't communicate with him. And it's showing on the court. Hey, after the game, after practice, go out with that player. Take that player out. Get Create a different emotion. Create a connection of a feeling for the person by just buying them something to eat and laughing with them, joking with them, joking about the fact that you don't understand the same language together, joking about the fact that, you know, that you can't talk to each other. You would be surprised on how far that would take you in your team with a player that you don't even know how to communicate with because y'all created a different connection. Now y'all created a different connection and now y'all have the chemistry even if I'm not able to talk to you as much, now we created the chemistry that is deeper than just basketball. Once you create that connection that's deeper than just basketball, now you're communicating on another level with a person because now they feel you. You ever have some of those players that you play with so much and you be like, man, I feel him, bro. Like, I know what he finna do. He know what I finna do. Or I know my team. I know when this person go here, we're going to go there. We're just a finely tuned machine. A lot of times, that doesn't always, communication is a big part of it, but there's so much other factors that go along with that that allows that to happen. So, I believe I have that in the show notes for all the listeners. You get a discount for anyone that's a listener. Go pick up that book for guys that are serious because it really breaks down how you can become a player and navigate across these types of issues that do come up. A lot of times, a lot of times these come up and if you don't, they're just so not talked about and not perceived as a big deal until it's a big deal. Misconception number eight, overseas players have unlimited free time and do not need to focus on any other aspects of life outside of basketball, such as personal growth or education. You are blessed with free time. That is one thing that I stress a lot on this platform is utilizing the free time that you have as an athlete overseas. And I believe that one of the biggest things that we do as athletes, as being a pro, as being in this game, is I realize that we waste a lot of time not preparing for what's important after the life and during the life. We just, we wasted time on things that are not important that don't move. It's like we once once you get into the game so deep, you think that there is nothing else, and you don't have to prepare and work towards anything else. You should be used majority of your career to build for when you're done. You're just the one of the blessings that basketball professionally gives you is the opportunity to seek out new skills in it allows you the time to work and develop new skills and work on your personal growth and just developing yourself to a better human being or learning a high value skill that you can use after you're done playing the game because now you have the money along with the time that you put into a skill to utilize when you're done with your career most guys don't even realize that my career is going to be over with one day and what am I going to do? Just pick up a regular job? If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But that's not what it's there for. All this free time, most people just, most players just play 2K all day. I'm going to blow it down, play 2K all day. I'm going to hop on the game. I'm going to get on live. I'm going to just chop it up. You don't get the time. You don't get to just sit back and waste that time, which we all, which I'm very much guilty of. Waste that time not utilizing for what's the most important. If we start valuing first and foremost time and how important that is over the money and realize the more time that we put into ourselves and developing ourselves will allow us to generate more money for ourselves because we're using, no matter what, without time, we can't do anything. We don't have time to learn something. We can't make more money. We don't have time to train. We can't get better. If we don't have time to do the things that we need to do, we can never pursue or further any aspect or endeavor that we have in life. That's why we need that. But with this life, you get a various amount of free time 
that most athletes, like I just talked to one of my friends, he's like, I got two days off. We just had two days and then you probably got to practice for another two and a half hours the next day and you got a eight day lay, um, eight days off before your next game. So you probably, you have two days off and then you're going to go once a day for those rest of those practice. You might lift and then you're going to have one practice. You're done by 1.30. You have the rest of the day for yourself. Look at all that time. What are you using all that time with? Why does the light keep changing? What are you utilizing all that time for? That is something you do not... One thing you don't want to do as an athlete is waste the time and not utilizing and maximizing the opportunity to develop something further for yourself in your life. You have to develop... That's what I learned. That's why all this created. This platform, this podcast, because this takes a lot of time. And in order to do this, I have to utilize that time for it. So I took up all that free time from playing the game, from always going out or whatever, and just Netflixing it up to death to build something, to learn something, learn about my finances, learn about managing um, my money, learn about the game, learn about the business aspect of the game, learn about how to invest your money just taking time to learn the essential things that can further and develop your life because you have the time to do it. Misconception number nine. Overseas players receive unwavering support and praise from fans and communities wherever they go without encountering any negativity or criticism. You're crazy if you think you're not going to get no criticism. That's one thing you get the most for being a player. You're going to get criticized more than anybody. You're going to get demolished. They are going to tear you up. They are going to tear you up. Because you're not from here. You ain't from here. You you come over here. We bring you in. We pay you this money. You're supposed to be the one that's supposed to help us win. They will chew you up. They You will get criticized more. <laughs> and looked at. And get called all kinds of names and disrespected because you're not from you're you and they hood. That's how I like to always say it. You and they hood now. Don't believe that I am the player and I'm just here to get revered and shower me. Have a bad game. Have two. And see how the city turns on you. See how the general see how the management turns on you. See how your own team they get. The coaches, the team, like, they will turn on you so fast. Make your head spin. Don't think that just because you come over there that you ain't going to, no one is not going to talk about me bad. Nobody, man, listen, I believe that's everywhere, that's everywhere in life that we're going to encounter criticism and you know, people putting us down. But when you're in another country and you're out there by yourself or you only got one other player that, like another teammate or import because normally it's only one or two players on the team. Hopefully you get along with that player because the scrutiny that you will have is the team's not doing good from the city, from just the league, from the, just the environment because you're already, you're, you, who are you compared to them? And that's something that I realized about just most countries you're adjusting to them because they've been in this life their whole life and they're in this bubble. You're just not coming into their world and their bubble. And if it's a bas- if it's their team and their club and you're coming into their bubble, they feel like they have more rights over the team and how they feel about it than you, even though you play there. They've been a fan here. They've been Most of these players, they be fans or they be a part of the club since they was five, six years old. They ain't grown up all, all their life here and that's all they know and this is their club and this is their city. And you come over here stinking it up. They're going to jump down your head, man. They're going to jump down your head. Last one. Number 10. The number 10 misconception about overseas players have a guaranteed and stable financial future. And they do not need to worry about financial planning or making wise investments for life after basketball. If you listen to this, this podcast, if you listen to this show, I... Always talk about the instability in this game. How to invest. Learning. I just spoke about the last misconception all that time. 
having the time to learn how to invest your money, having the time to learn how to create a life for yourself after the game is over with. Because you believe, if you believe that it's just, I'm going to be paid every year and it's just going to keep flowing and coming in, this game is one of the most unstable situations, uh, career paths that you can choose. Between injuries, between teams bad mouthing you, between having a bad season, between just getting older and getting someone younger and better, that's out of you. Between dealing with getting undercut on your money, not taking good, like having to take bad deals, the stability in this game is horrible. And if you do not increase your financial intelligence and learn what to do with the money that you are getting, you will be worse off when you leave this game than when you ever came in as a rookie, play 10, 12 years. If you do not understand how to financially be financially stable and manage your money and create your own stability for your life, you are headed down the road of pure turmoil and destruction after this game is over with. It can be literally a life sentence, a death trap to playing this game if you don't understand how to utilize the time that you have to build the stability that you need for your life. Basketball is just a tool. You need to use that tool to build the house and the structure and the life that you need for yourself. And I hope players hear this today and understand that you're not, this is not just you <clears throat> wake up, you go play for so many years, and then you have the dream life that you've always thought of, like an NBA player, and now I have the big mansion and stuff. That's not what this current career entails. Can you get to that? Yes. This life can be a stepping stool, a step, a, a tool you use to reach to that life that you want for yourself. It has so many pluses to it and positivity to it that you can use to build a stable and financial life for yourself, mainly because of all the free time that you have. You can literally have a 10-year, 12-year, 15-year career finish your last game and be broke, have nothing to show for it, be in debt. And that's your life. That's your history. That's what you, that's what you have to show for it. If you're not careful, if you're not diligent in understanding what you need to do in this game to make it work for you when you're done, you will regret ever playing this game and choosing this career path. So I say all that to say this. This game is very unstable. It is very difficult. It is very hard, but it's very worth it. But do not let any of these misconceptions blind you to the fact of what it takes to become a pro and how to utilize all that it has to offer to become great in this game. Listen, man, that's all I got for this show today i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you guys are informed now on what these misconceptions are and what their life is really like and you take this and you run with it and you use it and you apply this knowledge and understand this now before you start your career or now you know listen that's all i got for this episode remember greatness is a habit not a right i'll catch you guys next time I'm out. hey guys thanks for tuning into the show Please subscribe on our YouTube, Spotify, Apple, and wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate it.